The pandemic has made it painfully clear Europe is lagging behind digitally, be it for platforms for remote learning or semiconductor chips vital for many of the bloc's industries, Europe has catching up to do. Now the EU Commission has presented on how it wants to do that. Semiconductor production at Bosch. This June, the world's largest automotive supplier is set to open another chip plant in Dresden, a project that's in line with the European Union. By 2030, according to an estimate, one-fifth of the chips needed worldwide could come from Europe. But that scenario is currently a long way off. Right now, Asia is the dominant player in the global semiconductor market, with a share of 70 percent. The U.S. follows in second place, while Europe trails with an 8 percent market share. This increasing reliance on outside businesses has startled EU policymakers because it's not just semiconductors that are receiving attention and funds, but also blockchain technology and artificial intelligence. Chips and the ability to process information at ultra-fast speeds are seen as a key to the future. These tiny tools enable autonomous driving and the further digitization of industry, for example. Quantum computers could also play a role in this. These are computers with enormous processing power that can be used, for example, to develop modern medicines or to calculate traffic flows. But this technology is still in its infancy. But in five years, the plan is to have the first quantum computers available in Europe. Earlier, I spoke to Thierry Breton. He's the EU's Commissioner for Internal Market, and he told me that he believes the European corporate landscape has enough potential to make this ambitious plan come true. The first one, of course, is that we have a very good companies. And, of course, we need to, uh, to help these companies to achieve this target. The second thing is that we have an excellent, excellent research centers uh, all over Europe and very strong academic also in order to support it. And the third one, which is also extremely important, we have not only the political will, but we have also now, uh, let's say, um, the financing tools in place, because thanks to our uh, big next generation EU program, uh, we are ready to support now uh, this uh, uh, investment. And we know it will be a big investment uh, with the support, of course, of, uh, of member states and also of companies. So, yes, we are ready to put a significant amount uh, uh, on the table in order to achieve this extremely important target, because at the end of the day, behind this, uh, this is a matter of technological sovereignty for Europe. Now, Mr. Breton, one quite successful economic principle is that not everybody needs to produce everything. Is there no other way uh, to trying to catch up with industry leaders in the United States that are decades ahead in developing and manufacturing than this plan? No, that's a very good question. And, and, and of course, um, uh, when we speak of resilience, uh, we don't need to do everything on our own. I have been a CEO myself, and I know this uh, extremely well. But I know also, being a politician and also having been a CEO, that in order to be strong and to be able to negotiate uh, with your partners, you need to have some areas where you are strong. And we believe here at the Commission that it is extremely important to be, to be strong in some critical areas, like in semiconductors, including be, be, behind 10 millimeters and maybe 5 millimeters, because at the end of the day, uh, what will be at stake will be our sovereignty. Look at what happened today. Uh, our car industries are suffering just because we don't have enough resources and components. So we need to anticipate this. It is my job, and we will do it. Mm. Now, but there are industry leaders from the car sector that are saying wanting to produce the smallest scale chips is too ambitious. The gap is pretty wide between what you and the Commission have in mind and what the industry can deliver without committing financial suicide. Well, uh, this is exactly uh, why we have uh, many tracks, and, uh, and it is also, uh, you know, uh, I'm coming also from technology, there is no lost battle. Uh, it's true that uh, uh, we will need to uh, find the right partners to do this. It is important, uh, going uh, through five, uh, below uh, five nanometers, that we can do it also with partners. There are some partners who are globally today uh, willing to do this. I really think we need to engage with them, because at the end of the day, 
um, if we uh, uh, anticipate uh, 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 after uh, 2030, we know that uh, these processors below 5, maybe 2 nanometers, will be absolutely critical everywhere for cloud computing, for edge computing, for HPC supercomputing, and also for many, many connected vehicles and other tools like this. Thierry Breton, EU Commissioner for Internal Market, thank you for your insights.